gorgeous, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I'm going to be analysing Given Up by Linkin Park live in Clarkston HD. I assume that that means the video is in HD unless Clarkston is in some kind of a state called HD. Houston, Texas, Clarkston HD. We don't have states in England so I don't know how it works. This video does look quite high quality so I think it's in HD either way. <laughs> Ever since I started the channel I've wanted to analyse Chester Bennington's voice and I just haven't yet until now. I think I've only ever heard Linkin Park songs with my eyes closed. Put the album on and go about my um, crying. And this is why I've been so excited to explore the live vocals of Chester Bennington with you. So get nice and comfy, little blanket if it's cold, and let's listen and analyse this extraordinary vocalist together. It's so cool how the clapping sounds like there's chains attached to him. There must be some kind of bells simultaneously in the background. cutest little face you've seen in your life. Oh, look at him go. Some of this is hard to watch. The depression that he had is so present and visceral. The rigidity in his stance and the little movements, stuff like this. I am going to try and hold it together because I think the best way that I could honour his memory is to explain his vocal techniques. So that is what I shall do. Maybe if I do another Linkin Park analysis and we've already addressed how incredible his voice is, maybe I'll let go a little bit more in the next one. <laughs> so you've been warned. Okay, first thing I want you to notice is his breathing technique. Again, he is doing a technique called 360 breathing. We all know that we have to breathe into our diaphragm, but sometimes that terminology is quite confusing. Like, where's the diaphragm? How does it move? If I'm not breathing into my diaphragm usually, then where am I breathing? The phrase breathe from the diaphragm, in my opinion, is just a cheap description. The most effective way to breathe when you sing is to expand your back and your tummy area. So when I expand my tummy like this, my internal organs drop to allow for more space for my lungs. And so that's very helpful. But most of the ribbiness in our body is in our back. Right? So this slightly hunched over position enables you to drop your belly and it also starts to kind of expand this backwards area for you as well. Thinking about your body filling up like this, kind of like a peanut shape. I think it just makes a little bit more sense. One thing we do generally want to avoid doing is breathing too much into the clavicles. But if you see someone's chest rise a little bit when they're singing, that isn't necessarily the end of the world. The more jumping around the singer does will mean they need to breathe into their clavicles a little bit more because clavicular breathing is the best way to get oxygen into your body as fast as possible. And when you've been doing a little bit of cardio, you need breath as fast as possible, which is why we do this <sighs> once we've been running for a while, unless you're at peak physical fitness. little asterisk next to all of these comments is he does have a very naturally high voice. We know this because when he sings the verse stuck in my head again those notes for the average man would be actually quite high because even in my personal female voice they're not low at all and so so please do know that if you try and cover these songs and everything feels so high and strainy it isn't you you should probably just try and practice it in a slightly lower key. And the best way to find out the appropriate key for you is to sing the verse in a place in your voice that feels normal and roughly where you speak in this instance. And your vocal door 
needs a different key. Not the lamest thing I've ever said, unfortunately. Okay, so the timbre of this big, beautiful B. Oh, piano's not on. For belt. Uh, it's not up. Now the biggest difference between those two examples isn't what the actual vocal folds themselves are doing. It's due to our little friend twang. Crazy little thing called twang. You can see that the cheeks are lifted and there's a little bit more tension in the face to generally keep this sound resonating a little bit higher. Yes, but there's something a little bit more anatomically involved. And that is the cheeky little epiglottis. So this little thing comes over the vocal folds while they're producing all of their beautiful little sounds and shrinks the space, makes the belt easier to manage. And believe it or not, twang, this thing that's so commonly associated with like, oh yeah, can actually be the bestest friend of fry screaming. Know what to take, thought I was focused but I'm scared. up on this box which can actually do really good things for ab support as well if you try it now just lift your foot up and push right in on your tummy you will probably notice that your abs are like hello and then to switch on the grit he's brought that other hand in as well yeah it kind of helps you can turn on a little bit more through your lats with both hands here and support for your lats is really good for support for your breath because the lats are by the ribs and your lungs are in the ribs and your lungs have all the breath and so yeah that's great for breath support but it's also sometimes good for mental support as well while we're getting through those notes we want to feel when we're doing something quite intense vocally that we are fully supported by our bodies by the ground so this really strong stance helps us focus on the strength that is required for the voice beyond just the anatomical help it provides <laughs> face in this particular scream it that yeah it is um it's truly heartbreaking in the sense of the word that I can kind of feel myself fracturing inside as he does it the reason that it hits so hard is because it isn't dramatic you know it's not surrounded by theatre He's just kind of blank. And that is the reality for most people that are severely depressed. It's like so aggressive inside sometimes to the point where you feel like you couldn't express a physical manifestation of it because it's just so nasty. Now fry screaming is the name of the technique he does here when you hear off that beautiful static. And unlike things like growls where you kind of <coughs> you activate extra tissue for ice screaming isn't that it's the actual voice itself the baby version of this and how you can start to achieve this kind of effect yourself is to find what we call mode zero vocal fry uh... but one of the most significant differences between uh and is twang because many of us can produce ah, uh, but it seems impossible to transition to it just by you know using more breath. It's just like ah. Uh. 
<sighs> but you need to compress the space in some way. Definitely doesn't mean squeeze. What it does mean is figure out how to shrink it. So two of the main ways you're gonna be able to take your uh, vocal fry to a fry screen is first of all, glottal compression, which you can find by imagining you're picking up something really heavy, <sighs> like my emotional baggage. And the second way that really has worked best for me personally and for my students is twang, ouch. It's in the same position larynx wise, it's just that the vocal folds have gone from closing together in these kinds of regular oscillations that ah, When you're practicing your fry screams, you will probably get this sound a lot. Or where your vocal folds are a little bit confused and they want to phonate like they've been doing your whole life up until this point. But that's totally normal. The key is how you deal with that. If every time you start to phonate normally or you know, differently, you do this to try and squeeze it together, that's when you're gonna hurt yourself. But if you just take one step back and just focus on that fry sound, your vocal folds are eventually gonna adjust to that position. So we've got a couple of different little screamy flavors. I scream, you scream, we all scream, full stop. <laughs> or period, sorry, for my American viewers. But the reason why this is crazy impressive and why I think he is probably the best fry screamer in the world ever, from what I've heard anyway, is how intense he's able to make the sound, how perfect all the shapes are in his throat and larynx to make such a humongous, monstrous uh, resonance from it. And what blows my mind the most is being able to switch the breath pressure and that method of phonation instantly. Like, that is freaking crazy. Usually most people would need a little bit of a run up, you know, or at least, a run up to get it to sound as huge as that, but he just doesn't. <laughs> He's just able to do it. We can all learn to fry scream. It might take you a month, a year, three years, five years. Really, it can take this long to find this completely new muscle coordination, but to sound like this, oh gosh, even just thinking about it, yeah, is, um, it's rather divine. If this wasn't healthy, what he was doing, like if he was just ripping his voice to shreds, there would be no way that he would be able to hold these screams on for as long as he can. Not to mention, the scream we get at the end, you see how he leans back? Yet yeah, the scream remains. So we know that it isn't directly correlated with the intrinsic workings of the voice. He's putting a lot of pressure on his body in general to support him while he sings, and the muscles in his neck are just kind of all linked in. Oh, wow, okay. The biggest thing to watch out for, actually, is kind of a little bit more about how much the chin and neck kind of protrudes from the body. This position here, although it looks quite bad, if we come up and we straighten our back, our head's just here. So the head in proportion to the body is not that bad. That is bad. You see that hyperextension? That is gonna put a lot of strain, I can already feel it. It's gonna be bad feelings for the one that does that. I think a really good reason to talk about Chester, how he sang, how he expressed himself, what, how he wrote, and all of this stuff. Whether he knew it or not, he actually ended up creating this giant community of fans who oftentimes experience similar things to him. And so all of these people that are together <laughs> relating to the lyrics know that they're not alone. When we can watch someone else tell their story and it feels exactly like they're telling ours, we know for sure that we're not alone. I'm sure it's been said a gazillion times, but <laughs> a truly incredible vocalist. The coordination difficulty is kind of like the switch between clean phonation and fry to this level is like... I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> I've since had time to reflect. It's like 
crocheting and tap dancing at the same time. But it's harder than that. So it's time for today's oracle card. You'll be pleased tonight. What do we have today, fairy folk? Well, oh Christ. I might have to bleep things out. I see that grin. Don't try and hide it. Are you horny? <laughs> Are you horny for a person, a passion project or life right now? Unicorny comes in many ways. <laughs> Get feisty, naughty and play. Manifest your orgasmic potential to bring frolicking fun and f***ing fabulousness. I mean, if Sam Smith can sing Unholy at the Grammy Awards and that's considered family entertainment, then this is really not that bad. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me analyze, please do let me know down below in the comments as it is always my pleasure. Have a wonderful day. I love you so much and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>